Welcome to this edition of Audio App. I'm Jim Schwartz. With me today, Steve Gauck. Steve is a field agronomist in southern Indiana for Bex. Steve, one of the topics uh, a lot of folks are interested in hearing a little bit more about is the impact of the warm winter on decisions we have to make for this growing season. So I know nitrogen is something that you've been talking about. Uh, what are your thoughts in that regard? So nitrogen is a is a concern, right? With the warm weather, the wetter soils, uh, microbes are more more active. We're breaking down nitrogen. We're releasing nitrogen. So for a lot of scenarios in the north where they've put on some fall applied anhydrous, uh, in those scenarios, if we did not use NSERV, the chance of losing some of that nitrogen is very high. So really, we're, most of the nitrification happens when soil temperatures are about 50 degrees um, is, is where kind of that peak is. As we, as we cool back down, we got to get below 32 before they stop. So if we, we're in between that range all winter without anything inhibiting that nitrogen from breaking down, moving from ammonia to nitrate, there is a risk that we've lost some of that. Um, the guys that did use an inserve type product in our anhydrous, they're probably in, in okay shape. But it's probably it's going to be something to consider as we start uh, this spring. Now also with the, with the wet and um, with nitrogen coming in the spring, I think having nitrogen on your planter is also going to be a big value from that standpoint. So, Steve, if uh, if a grower does think he's lost nitrogen, you, you mentioned one thing he could do is maybe put some on with a planter. Uh, are there other things he needs to be thinking about, or is it just making you know making an application? Should he measure it? Should he send his soils off for a nitrate test? What should he do to to have a better or a clearer picture? Yeah, so to have a clear picture, sometimes difficult, right? How do we know how much nitrogen is left in that soil? How much is available? But but taking some like pre side dress nitrate tests, some soil tests. Uh, to pull that out would be would be very beneficial, right? It would give us a great starting point that, okay, I've lost a little bit or I've lost 50%, I've lost 20%. Then it helps set our plan for the upcoming year, putting some nitrogen with the planter, uh, maybe even having to split apply. But if you were counting on all that nitrogen 100% up front, you put it on in the fall, we need to run a test to find out how much is still available in there then make adjustments moving forward. What about tissue testing in season? If, if for instance, I can't really uh, augment at planting, I don't have that capability, should I be prepared to at least tissue test uh, to, to understand in season as well? So there's a lot of value in tissue testing in terms of, you know, not just nitrogen, but other nutrients as well as even we look at PFR proven products and some of our foliar feed type scenarios. So there is definitely advantage. It, by taking some tissue samples, uh, I would start early though to make sure I don't ever get behind the eight ball from a nitrogen standpoint or from any uh, foliar nutrition. But yes, taking some tissue samples would help set you up for the best success next summer. What about bugs? How has this warm weather impacted insects this year? So I always think that's an interesting question. We always seem to get that a lot, or the old kind of uh, rule of thumb is, oh, warm winter, we're going to have higher insects. Well, insects do a pretty good job of insulating themselves when we do have even cold winters. But the fact we've been warm and we've been wet, it probably has two effects, right? The warm weather has allowed some more insects maybe to overwinter, something like a stink bug type scenario. Uh, but the but the fact we've been wet almost all winter may actually decrease some of the insect uh, population from that standpoint. But taking an overall look at things with the warmer winter, the chances of more insect pressure early on or an earlier start to insect pressure is definitely there. So looking at more possibly running insecticides, some in furrow, um, some like our PFR proven with our capture, things like that. Info to help ensure against some of that, but then it's just going to take some scouting as the summer goes on. So stink bugs and possibly even corn borer. We could see a slight increase in those because of the warm weather. What about the issues that uh, you, you know? Last fall was a continuation of the growing season in a lot of in a lot of areas, and we got on ground when it was wet because we had to get the crops out. How about compaction? How about that topic? Did, any thoughts around that? So for me, compaction's a big concern. If we go back even to the, the fall of 18, the spring of 19, the, the fall of 19, we've done a lot of things to put compaction in. And, and now a lot of us are very anxious for 2020 planting season, and, and so am I. And my biggest fear is that we're going to go out there and, and try to push the envelope. Hey, I want, I want everybody to try to plant early if soil conditions are right. But that first tillage past the seasons, when we put in most of our compaction, so I would really encourage you guys to, when you go out to dig, 
Don't just take off the top of the dirt and see if it makes a ribbon. Dig down to the depth you're going to be running that tillage tool and run some dirt through your fingers. See if it makes a ribbon. See what the conditions are at, the, at either the planting depth or at the tillage tool's depth. And that's really where we've got to know if it's too wet or conditions are good to run. Because if we put compaction with that first tillage pass, we're going to really struggle to get it out with anything else the rest of the season. Or if we're trying to fix some ruts or other things that we caused last fall, if it's wet down below those ruts, down below those compacted areas, and we go in and try to fix them, we're just going to be increasing that compaction. So, A, I want everybody to try to, to get out early and plant, but make sure that we are looking at the tillage the, the soil moisture at the depth of the tillage. Fair enough. Steve, as we wrap up, any final thoughts about the impact of this warm winter on spring decisions or even growing season decisions? Well, I think it's just a matter of, of being on top of it and scouting. Um, weed control, obviously going to be a, a, a concern throughout the years. Fertility with all this rain, has it moved a lot of fertilizer around? Just being on top of things and scouting. We can really set ourselves up for a fantastic year. We're just going to have to be a little patient and pay attention to the details. With me is Steve Gauck, field agronomist for Bex Hybrids in Southern Indiana. That's it for this edition of Audio App. Thanks, Steve. Have a great day. Thank you.